Hello and welcome back to the K Road to KSP2. I'm starting off today's episode with a Mun Space Station crew mission. It's uh, pretty simple. Uh, there's no crew on board. Uh, y you'll see why in a moment. But there's uh, this is going out to the station. Um, I didn't mean to not put crew on it. Uh, I actually did put crew on it the first time I launched this mission. But then my uh, PC crashed. But that's neither here nor there. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, maybe hit that little, you know, bell icon so you get the notifications. And yeah, even comment. It's always great to see comments. And yeah, we're heading out to the MUN. Here we are. We're, uh, we're slowing down. We're going to be docking at the station that we have been building here over the last couple of episodes. I know... We haven't done too much progress towards, you know, finally reaching our goal of, uh, you know, rescuing our Kerbals around Jewel, but th that's okay. We will get to that within the next two episodes. I do know that there's only four episodes left, or wait, well, including this, there's four episodes left to the end of uh, Road to KSP2. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's not much time left. Yeah, we uh, got to finish this thing up uh, pretty soon. And actually, uh, not next episode. And not the, uh, not the episode after that. But I think the episode just before uh, Case B2 comes out, uh, we will be... Uh, we will be, actually, I think in the finale episode it will be, that I will show you a rocket in real life that I, you know, uh, I built to get my L1 certification. Uh, it's currently nothing yet. I've only designed it as of right now. Uh, but it will be built by the end of February, and it will be launched by about mid-February. So, yeah. It's going to be pretty exciting to actually show you guys. Uh, yeah, so here we are. We're finally closing in on the station itself. As you can see, this craft has two docking ports on it. Uh, that is because I meant to dock it back first to this station, but um, I was too lazy. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. That's too lazy. Um, but from now on, they're supposed to be docked back first to this station. And here it is. These, this, uh, this craft specifically is to, is really only supposed to, uh, go between here and, uh, here and the station, uh, the station that's in, uh, mid medium carbon orbit mko but yeah i wanted to get to a sunrise so you can see the station with its uh with its new parts on it but yeah here we are we're slowly getting close to the sun and i only saw it for a second anyway this is escape one this is basically an escape pod <laughs> yeah i uh and i launched it with the crew on board um for a very uncomfortable journey or to the moon because this is based off of you know the uh soyuz uh soyuz uh like progress modules i think it's the progress one or yeah anyways uh it's uncomfortable and i thought it would be funny if the uh escape pod for the uh for the space station was Soyuz based when the uh, progress module on the actual space station is the reason why they need an escape pod, which I just thought would be kind of like a funny little bit of irony to really balance out the episode, you know? Also, I used aero spikes on this mission. Uh, they turned out to be pretty good. Uh, I, was, I was pretty surprised with how well they worked. Uh, I mean, they did have a solid rocket booster with them uh i've actually really never used the aero spikes mainly because i've heard that they're kind of not all that great 
in real life, but you know, in KSP, I've heard that they work pretty decently for like SSTOs, for like big SSTOs, and uh, well, it's almost a big SSTO. I mean, this thing gets us more than enough fuel. I was not expecting it. Like, if I had this with vectors, it would not have gotten this far as of right now. So I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, yeah, so here we are, just slowly. Well, not slowly. I mean, we're pretty. We're moving pretty, pretty fast. We're moving pretty fast towards the mun. And I decided to ditch this stage, uh, as you'll see in just a second, because there's just too much fuel. It's just too much fuel on all these stages. I mean, if you wanted to dock to the station. And, uh, if you wanted to dock to the station and, uh, like, just, or dock to these little things and just fuel up the ship from there, it wouldn't be that bad of an idea. And I know in this series we won't be able to do that, but maybe in KSP2 we'll be able to actually be able to, uh, we'll actually be able to, you know, dock and do things like that. And it should be pretty fun. Uh, well, not dock and do things, but like, you know, I just don't have enough time for this series. Like, like time till KSP2 comes out. It's literally only three to four weeks away. Um, also, I'm sorry about getting this episode out late. I do know it's a little, little late for, uh, for, you know, some Kerbal Space Program uh, content this week. Um, I wasn't able to do it. I had a pretty busy week. Um, like I said, I had to design a rocket. Um, yeah, for my L1 certification. So I, I didn't. Re I didn't really have enough time. Uh, and that is why there's only three little segments to this episode. But trust me, the third segment is gonna make all of this worth it. It, it really starts hammering in the end of the series. We're going to start, you know, you're going to see how we're going to do things for the end of the series. And I, uh, I really hope you guys will like it. But until then, we are going to move our little command module to each of the, well, not each, but to the docking port and we're going to dock to the craft it's well we're gonna dock to the space station or the the mun space station the mun orbiting station yeah anyway uh the docking the auto docking like mod or whatever was freaking out uh when i was doing this so i had to go and manually do it there's a pain because there's only there's only a set of four RCS thrusters on it and it's not on the center of mass so there's a little bit of wiggle and uh, yeah this is mainly just meant to leave the space station uh, it's never meant to come back there are landing legs on it which are there for a specific reason the landing legs are there so that just in case just in case things get bad enough, when the space station explodes, we can land on the Mun. I do believe there's enough Delta V to barely land on the Mun. Yep. That's that's really the only reason why. And here it is, the KSS Troy. It is going to be a beast. So, we're using this giant, giant rocket to basically just launch what is going to essentially just be the crew quarters yeah uh it's it's just an absolute beast the the entire thing will just you know it's also the kraken attacked our one of our uh one of our uh engines just there and just destroyed it it was like flipping all over the place anyway we are almost here into, you know, where we're supposed to be going. And there it is, 
those are the crew quarters for the ship uh a lot of it is inflatable it will be inflated i just need to get two engineers on board which is what we're going to be launching next episode and those two engineers will inflate all of those parts uh yeah and we will get a you know functioning spacecraft uh not functioning spacecraft but like a pretty impressive spaceship into the orbit of the well into the orbit of the uh, uh well Kerbin. uh yeah but right now it's basically just a space station it uh, we're waiting for the jewel mission to finish up. Uh, well, the rescue mission to finish up, uh, which should be launched, I believe, next episode. We should be able to launch it next episode. The jewel mission will actually be able to do what we need it to do. And, yep, the Kraken attacked again, which is a pain. But, yeah, we're going to go out there, circularize and basically just do our thing and uh yeah this uh the ship the ship will be absolutely uh important uh we're gonna bring a lot of kerbals all the way out to every planet in the solar system all right good to see you guys see you guys next time bye